It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a finish strong Friday. It is a winner's Friday. It is presented by DraftKings. And even better, it is a Michael North Friday. One of my favorite episodes every year. The schedule came out last night, and we are going to get into the details and figure out exactly how it was made momentarily with the NFL Vice President of Broadcast Planning and Scheduling. Yes, we've got winners to give out. I'm going to do those at the end. I'll get the Spread the Word winner, social media sponsor confirmation, email winner, and the YouTube shout-out winner. All of you will be announced at the end of the show. I don't want to mess around. I want to get right to Michael North. The Big Show. It's funny. Uh, Mike, right before I brought you on, we were talking off air, and it has to be six, seven, uh, maybe even eight years ago now that I reached out to you And you came on the show, and I think back then, Howard Katz might have talked to, like, Peter King for Peter King's column. But I want to say, Mike, that that might have been one of the only audio interviews that one of the first video audio interviews that somebody from the scheduling department did where you actually went over the schedule Because I was amazed. First of all, it's amazing how many people listen to that. And then secondly, the feedback I got from it. Now you guys sold me out. Now you guys are everywhere. Now I have nothing exclusive. Now it's like every, oh, he's on. you were on TV this morning. Now you're everywhere. I saved the good stuff for you today, pal. No doubt. You either get, uh, you either get the credit for making schedule release, uh, you know, a bigger media event, or you get the blame. Uh, that people have to listen to people like me talk about this for a couple of days. Uh, it's not like we didn't know who was playing whom, right? It's just a question of who was playing when. Uh, but I'm glad people are interested. I'm, I'm glad they care, obviously, and uh, always happy to talk about it. Really proud of the effort that you know our team put in and, and the end product here. And these last couple of days have been pretty good. The reception from the clubs on Wednesday and from the networks yesterday has been almost universally positive. So feeling pretty good about it and happy to talk to you about it. Yeah, but why do you guys hate the team of everybody listening right now? <laughs> hey, look, the, the, the truth is um, this product, this project, it, it's a zero-sum game, right? Anything that's good for the Packers is bad for the Bears. Anything that's good for NBC is bad for CBS and Fox. So this is not a project where when we finish, we know that everybody's going to be happy. They're not. They can't be. So it's really less about optimization and maximization, and it's really more about pain management. We know everybody's going to be disappointed, hopefully just a little and and hopefully evenly. So uh, happy to talk about it, happy to answer your questions, and I I definitely saved some good stories for you. All right. I love it. Um, Let's start with the computer, um, because one of the things I'm always interested in, were there any new rules that you put into the computer. And maybe I should take a step back because we have new listeners every year. We have new people watching youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL every year. So I think, although I really don't know, Mike, I think most people know that the schedule is set in terms of who you're playing, that it's formulaic, but every year without fail, it seems like there's still a large percentage of people that don't understand that part of it. Um, so, you, But you guys start with already knowing who is playing who and where. Yep. Not until the regular season ends, right? We don't know until the 2021 season ends what our 272 matchups are for 2022. So we had to wait literally right till the last minute. You remember that Raiders-Chargers game last year came down to the wire. Remember it was Ty Mageddon. If they had tied, the Chargers and the Raiders would have gone to the playoffs. But the Raiders winning put them in the playoffs as the number two seed in the AFC West. That standings-based game then, the number two team in the AFC West playing the number two team in the AFC North, that actually gave us a Steelers-Raiders game this year 
So we were able to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Immaculate Reception with an actual Raiders-Steelers game. Chargers win that game or they tie, we don't have that Raiders-Steelers game to deploy. So, uh, you know, we can't actually get started on 2022 until the 2021 season finished. But you've got it right. It's a rotational-based scheduling model where the teams literally know 14 of their 17 opponents for the next 12, 24, 36 years. So you know most of your games, there's only a handful that are still standings-based, including the new one, the 17th game. You know, we expanded our season to 17 games over 18 weeks last year. So still a couple wrinkles that we need to finish up the last season before we can look ahead to this season. Um, and then you've got it right. It's a big computer model that we built with our friends out in Western Canada, a company called Optimal Planning Solutions. They've been doing sports scheduling forever. Um, and we've all kind of grown up together trying to figure out you know, when Howard Katz, who runs the scheduling department, has a vision in his mind for what the schedule should look like, what the strength of the primetime packages should be, what's a fair three-game road trip, what's an unfair three-game road trip. You got to get all that out of Howard's head and get it into a computer model, get it into a software product. And it's hard sometimes. You know, Howard will say something like, well, that sounds like a football game. How do you write a mathematical model for sounds like in and on it? I wouldn't bet my life that we found the single one optimal schedule, whatever that means each year. But I do think we're getting closer and the computers have been running literally since the day after the Super Bowl. And, and don't tell my boss, but they're still running. I'm kind of curious to see if there's anything else out there, even though it is obviously a little too late. All right. So. But how do you do that when like Russell Wilson switches teams? Yeah or Brady comes out of retirement because, you know, and I think you don't, you make no mistake about it. Like you guys are trying to get the best ratings possible. This is a business. You're trying to get the biggest ratings for the biggest revenue. So when Russell Wilson gets traded or Brady comes out of retirement, has those two months of computer churning been wasted? Uh, they haven't been wasted, but, we certainly have to stop and kind of reevaluate. There's no question about it. The way the computer works is, you know, just ones and zeros. It doesn't think about, you know, emotion or anything like that. It's just thinking about ones and zeros. What is the value of this particular game? And when I say value, it's not a financial value. You know, we're lucky enough to have the media deals locked in for the next 11 years. If this schedule were terrible or this schedule were excellent, if ratings are up or ratings are down, it's not going to change the league's revenue. Um, it's really more about an asset for the fan. You know, the fans are looking at each of these 272 games and thinking about which ones do I care about? Which ones do I want to see? Which ones will I make plans or change plans to make sure that I can go watch? And when Tom Brady retired, there were still a lot of really good Tampa Bay games this year, just by rotation and standings. They were still playing Dallas, Green Bay, Kansas City, the Rams. I mean, there were going to be a lot of good Rams games. If Tom Brady's the quarterback, fans are going to make sure to clear their schedules and watch those games. The schedule makers are going to make sure to put those games in national television windows. So when he retired, the Tampa Bay games were worth X. And when he unretired, the Tampa Bay games were worth 2X or 3X. They were worth more. Um, same thing when Russell Wilson moved. Same thing when Matt Ryan moved, Tyreek Hill, Kalik Mack. Every time there's a big move like that, you know, the fan in you says, Oh, that's cool. I wonder what that's going to be like. The scheduler in us says, how does this change the value of these assets? This game now means something different. Best example I can give you is Seattle, Denver, right? If Russell Wilson is still quarterback in the Seahawks, a Broncos Seahawks game, you know, a throwback to the old AFC West back when Seattle was still in there. You're thinking Jim Zorn and uh, Steve Largen and, and uh, you know, the orange crush defense, but I'm not sure it would have been destined for Monday night football in week number one. Now, all of a sudden, it's Russell Wilson's return and trying to think about the right way to deploy that asset and have our fans have an opportunity to watch that game. We're not doing our jobs. If we put that game at 4.05 Eastern in week seven with five other games going on at the same time and it's only on in 13 percent of the country, you got to put that game in prime time. You got to put it somewhere where Seattle can celebrate him. Whatever network has the game can spend the day promoting it. Again, it's really about finding those storyline games, those, you know, return games, if you will. Mike McCarthy going back to Green Bay, Carson Wentz going back to Philly and trying to put those games in the windows where the fans that want to watch them can find them. Any new rules for the computer this year? I'm always interested in that. So people know they put a bunch of rules in the computer so that 
they have as equitable of a schedule as possible as well. Any new rules that you guys put in this year, Mike? Yeah, I'll give you a couple that are kind of interesting. The fans are going to notice uh, one of them, you know, week 16 this year, Sunday of week 16, Christmas Day. So we took the bulk of the Sunday afternoon games on CBS and Fox, the one o'clock and four o'clock Eastern time games off of Sunday, Christmas Day, moved them to Saturday. We've done that uh, every year. Christmas has fallen on a Sunday. Um, what that means is that the vast majority of the teams are playing on Saturday that weekend and everybody playing Saturday probably shouldn't play the previous Monday. So now we had to teach the computer, hey, look, as you move from week 15 to week 16, most of the games are going to be Saturday. Everybody playing Saturday shouldn't play Monday the previous week. So we were lucky enough to work with our partners at CBS and Fox. Obviously, NBC stayed on Sunday Night Football on Christmas night. We came up with three games now for Christmas, six teams playing on Sunday of Christmas Day. From those six, had to come two of them that were going to play the previous Monday so we can ensure even though it was a short week, it wasn't the shortest of the short weeks. Right. So that was one little wrinkle. Uh, Amazon becoming the Thursday night partner this year with the games moving to the streaming service. Uh, they had 15 games on Thursday. Uh, last year, that Thursday night package only had 14. So we had an extra Thursday night game, which meant two more teams in the league were going to play a second short week. Uh, it's the longer of the short weeks, if you will, because they're playing um, Saturday to the following Thursday. Like we said, most teams are playing Saturday of week 16. So you're playing a Thursday game in week 17. They're coming off a Saturday. But those two teams are going to have to play two short week Thursdays. So we had to teach the computer, you know, can't both be on the road. Maybe that shouldn't be one of the teams that's going international this year. They've already got their, you know, supposed scheduling challenge. Let's not, you know, double ding them with a international trip and a second short week. Uh, and, and just trying to figure out the right way to thread that needle. You know, every club in the league knew that was coming to somebody. Nobody was volunteering for it, of course. But, um, you know, it landed on Dallas and Tennessee. Both of them took it right in stride. Uh, and, and one more, I mentioned the international games. Uh, you know this. I think you played over internationally when you were still playing. Um, we, for the most part, bring teams home from the international games to their bye weeks. When we were going international in the early days, it was very, very new. It was very, very different. I don't want to say challenging because our guys handle pretty much anything we throw at them. But teams would go over there Monday or Tuesday, and they'd practice over there all week. They'd let their bodies adjust to the time difference, and then they'd come home to a bye week. Now these international games have become almost routine, and most of the teams that were uh, selected to travel to play international games this year opted not to come back to their bye weeks. They said, just give us a home game and let that bye week slide later. The schedule's longer. The season's longer. Let's not put that bye week locked in right after our international trip. We'll take a home game and we'll treat it like any other Sunday. And let's let that bye week slide even later in the season if we can. You can't put a rule in, Mike, for, for no three-game road trips? Look, the truth is we haven't yet put a schedule out where there are zero three-game road trips. So there's always going to be a couple. What the rules are saying to the computer as it's looking through this infinite solution space and trying to build this puzzle is let's not have the three game road trips keep falling on the same teams over and over again, or let's not have it fall on the same team year after year. So if you had a three game road trip last year, you shouldn't have one again this year. Look, the truth is three game road trips aren't all created equal. Um, you know, when Ernie Acorsi was here in the league office for a little while as a consultant, he helped us a little bit as we tried to formulate some of these rules. Ernie always said, it's who you play, not where. So we could avoid a three-game road trip for a team and get them a home game, but that home game might be against Kansas City or Green Bay. Are they really better off playing, you know, one of the really good teams in the league at home instead of having to have this Yes, challenging three-game road trip, but what if it's three relatively easy trips and, you know, three teams that didn't make the playoffs last year? So try to be cognizant of what each three-game road trip looks like and penalize it appropriately so that it doesn't fall on the same team in consecutive years. I kind of have a little bit of a bone to pick with you. Fire away. Everybody does. Okay. So the, my favorite team I played for is the Buffalo Bills. Okay. And so I have an affinity for them. I also, as you know, do the Eagles preseason games on TV and I do the pregame on the radio. Mm -hmm. You kind of have a Monday night football doubleheader yep. in week two, but you don't because they overlap. It's going to be the uh, overlap for at least an hour and a half where 
I'm going to have to be deciding whether to be watching the Bills game or the Eagles game. Talk, because this is the first time you guys have done this. So talk me through having a Monday Night Football doubleheader, because it sounds like more of these are coming with the first game at 7.15, the second game at 8.30. Yep, you got it. I mean, the, the truth is, you know this, we've played Monday Night Doubleheaders before. We did it for a decade. Uh, week one on ESPN, we would start one game at 7 o'clock Eastern and the other game at 10.15 Eastern. The good news was you had six straight hours of football, one game then the other. The bad news is that that early game starting at 7 o'clock Eastern time, that's 4 o'clock Pacific. You're limiting the number of teams, the number of stadium where you could play that first game. And same thing on the back end. If you're not kicking off until 10, 15 Eastern time, you're not kicking off in the East Coast and you're questionably whether you're quick kicking off in the Central time zone. So you're limiting the number of possible games you could even slot into that back end window. And then that game's not going to end until 1 o'clock in the morning on the East Coast. You're asking a lot of the fans to stay up until 1 o'clock in the morning to watch the end of a game that's probably involving two teams you know, not from their division, not something that uh, they may normally have a whole lot of affinity for. So we've done the back-to-back, -back, one game, then the other. We're going to try something a little different this year. It's an experiment. It's trying to be a little different. It's trying to be a little innovative. We're going to kick off that early game at 7-15, and it's Tennessee-Buffalo. Everybody's going to want to watch these two young uh, superstar teams, you know, two of the best teams in the AFC. Uh, we're going to want to watch that game for the first half. Then right when halftime hits, we're going to kick off another game. Here come the Vikings and the Eagles over on ABC. And you've got it exactly right. ABC is coming back into the NFL family. They started simulcasting the wild card game on ESPN a few years back. Uh, they started simulcasting a couple of Monday night football games each year. They're going to simulcast a few this year as well, four of them. Uh, and now here they're going to have their own game. So, we're going to try a little experiment this year, one on ABC, one on ESPN, side by side. You're going to have to fire up two TVs or have a TV and a tablet or something and kind of keep an eye on both. And you've got it right. We got one of those this year with the Monday night side by sides. We got three of them next year. And we might try three different things next year. We might try, you know, the hour and a half overlap. We might try kicking them off simultaneously. And maybe we even do go back to one early and one late and kind of have six uninterrupted hours. We're we'll try everything. Our fans are going to tell us what they want. They're going to show us, you know, by what they watch and, and how they react to it. And we'll work with our partners at Disney and figure out the right way to, you know, move forward with this. That's interesting. So you might try a few different things next year. Yeah. I mean, look, the truth is, as you know, we are always trying new things. I mean, we were talking just before we came on here. Um, you know, we've got games in Windows now where we've never had games in windows before. You know, it used to be one o'clock and, and four o'clock on Sunday afternoons. Uh, and that was it. You know, when we added Monday night football, that was new and innovative. And everybody said, you can't play football at night. Nobody's going to watch. Uh, we added Sunday night football after we'd added Monday night football. And everybody said, you can't do that. Two games at night each week. Nobody's going to watch. We added Thursday football. We added Sunday morning football. We've got Christmas Day. We've got Thanksgiving Day. We've got New Year's Day. You know, we're going to try a lot of different things. Um, but again, it's it's really all about the fans. It's really all about taking all these really good assets, these 272 games. If you play them all Sunday afternoon at 1 o'clock and 4 o'clock, you can't watch them all. There's just not enough hours in the day. There's not enough screens for us uh, to be able to watch on. So pulling some of those really key assets out and deploying them in other windows so our fans can try some new things and interact with the product a little bit differently. Uh, we'll learn a little something every year and that which works and that which our fans like, we'll keep doing. And if they tell us this is a really terrible idea, Mike, please stop putting the two Monday night games overlapping. They won't be shy. They'll let us know and we'll adjust if we have to. So I'm curious about primetime games, Mike, in the sense that how many teams – request them and want a lot of primetime games versus teams that for various reasons prefer Sunday at one. I think fan perception is probably that every team and every player wants as many primetime games as possible. I can tell you at the player level that that's absolutely not the case. And I'll talk about it later. Why not? But are there teams that, and I'm sure you wouldn't tell me the names of them, even if even if you did, but are there teams that really don't want that many primetime games, or are they all clamoring for as many as possible? 
Depends on who you ask, Ross. If you talk to the vice president of marketing, if you talk to the, you know, company that's got their name on the stadium, uh, those guys will tell you, put us in prime time every week. You know, we want to get the brand out there. We want to build our fan base. Uh, we want to sell hats and T-shirts and jerseys and tickets. Um, so it depends on who you ask. You ask the revenue folks, most of them will tell you prime time every week, or at least national television. We should we should all think about when we talk about prime time television. It's not just about Sunday nights and Monday nights and Thursday nights. We should never forget that you know the windows that get the most eyeballs every year uh, Sunday afternoons at four twenty five. So even though that's not prime time. That's our most watched window. So those late Sunday afternoon games on CBS and Fox, we, the schedule team, look at those as primetime windows as well. They're national windows. So you got to find 70 games a year to satisfy Sunday night, Monday night, Thursday night, and the late Sunday afternoon doubleheader windows to make sure you got big games in those windows. Um, but if you talk to the head coach or the general manager or maybe even the ticket manager, he might tell you Sunday at one o'clock every week, please trying to find that balance where, yeah, you got to break some eggs to make an omelet. And we know that the coaches and the general managers have to adjust uh, to these non-routine weeks where you can't go seven days, seven days, seven days. The good news is if you find yourself playing some of these non-traditional, non-routine weeks, it's because you're good. You know, you're playing on Thursdays, you're playing on Mondays, you're playing on Sunday nights because you're good because we think you're in playoff contention, because the ratings deliver, because the fans want to watch. Um, so the good news is if you've got these sort of disjointed weeks within your season, uh, it's because you're doing something right. So again, it depends on who you ask at the club. Um, you know, you can ask 10 fans and they'll give you 10 different answers. Same thing at the club level. You ask the coach and general manager, he'll tell you one thing. You ask the vice president of revenue, he might tell you something different. His name is Michael North. He's the vice president of NFL broadcast planning and scheduling. He joins us here on the Ross Tucker football podcast every year because he is the man. And I love these conversations. Michael, thank you so much for the time again this year. Really appreciate it. Always a pleasure, Ross. Take care. I also appreciate Simply Safe. You know why? Because unless you've had your house broken into, or you've had an intruder, and I've had both in my life, you really don't understand how nice it is to have an easy to set up and use, reliable home security system. Which, by the way, is why the founders, Chad and Eleanor Lauren, created Simply Safe so they could feel safe again after their friends had their home broken into. Here's the key, 24-7 professional monitoring. It's priced at less than a dollar a day. No contract. You can even try it for 60 days risk-free or send it back for a full refund. All of these are the reason why it's been named best home security system three years in a row by U.S. News and World Report, which, by the way, also names Princeton the number one university, so they know what they're talking about. And as my listener, you can claim a free indoor security camera, plus save 20% on your Simply Safe security system and get your first month free with the interactive monitoring service. Visit simplysafe.com slash Tucker to customize your system and start protecting your home and family today. Again, that's simplysafe.com slash Tucker. Tuck's takes. All right. Any other thoughts about the 2022 NFL schedule? Yeah, I do. I understand the rest differential, right? I know that the rest differential between some teams and other teams can be different and that there are smart people. Warren Sharp's one of them. That will talk about that rest differential. But listen, the schedule is formulaic. We know who's playing who and where. And if there's a tough stretch, people are like, oh, they got such a tough start of this year. Or they have such a tough stretch at the end of the year. It evens out. You're playing those teams regardless. I hate the tough stretch. Well, you're you're going to have a tough stretch at some point. The schedule is designed to maximize ratings. 
and revenue, period. And also, by the way, the people that are basing the strength of schedule on last year's results, laughable, like laughable. Denver and Seattle, really? You don't think Russell Wilson switching teams between those two makes a big deal? Who cares what their records were last year? I personally think the most interesting element to the whole deal is who gets primetime games and who doesn't. Tuck takes. Report uh, from Ian Rappaport says Packers would take a second or a third round pick in exchange for Jordan Love. It's a bad look, I think. Um, the fact that he said that tells you that they're not sold on Jordan Love. If they were sold on Jordan Love being in the future, they wouldn't take a second or third round pick for him. So that tells you in my mind that they're not sold on him and nor that they really do believe Aaron Rodgers is going to be there for years. But it's not a good look for the Packers who drafted him in the first round, traded up to draft him in the first round, and yet would definitely take a second and maybe even a third, according to Rappaport. And not a good look for Love either. It's a bad look for both. Tux takes. We have a trade in the NFL. It's quarterback Jared Stidham and a seventh round pick from New England goes to Las Vegas in exchange for a sixth round pick. I don't know if this is more or less than a conditional seventh. I don't really know how to look at it, right? I mean, conditional, like this, at least you know you're getting some value, right? Like the, like the Patriots are getting some value by going from a seventh to a sixth. However, a conditional seventh, you're getting a new player. You're getting a new pick if the conditions are met. So I'm not sure which trade is considered lower in value, but obviously, I think what happened is, is that McDaniels has a comfort level with Stidham from the last few years and wanted a guy that really knew his system and knew it well to come in there and thought that would help as a backup and also help Derek Carr probably learn the system, have a guy that's been in it for years. Tux takes. Jerry Judy arrested in Denver on second-degree criminal tampering with a domestic violence enhancer. That is a really weird term, enhancer. Really wor- weird term. Enhancer usually has a positive connotation. Obviously, in this instance, it does not. This is new. We'll see what this means for Jerry Judy. Obviously, it's not good. The question is, how bad? Tux takes. And finally, Josh Lambeau suing the Jacksonville Jaguars for uh, his time with Urban Meyer in the workplace environment. That's the claim. That would really be interesting to me to see what, I mean, if the guy hit him, then I'm sure he can do that. I I guess I always wonder, like, LeVar Arrington swung my helmet at me. LeVar Arrington, which, by the way, hopefully you guys, got the email newsletter this week and you saw the story about my first day at minicamp with LeVar. You got to make sure you're signed up for that. RossTucker.com or just anytime we post the link anywhere on social media, you can click on to subscribe to the newsletter, which is like once every three months, by the way. It's just when I, when something happens that reminds me of a story I want to tell you guys. Um, but then LeVar hit me in the side of the head and I had to get three stitches. Like, could I have sued LeVar for workplace environment i don't know i mean it's football i guess what urban meyer did a little different as the coach but it's not a normal workplace i don't know how else to i don't know how else to say that i do know though that at DraftKings right now if you download the app the DraftKings sportsbook app and use promo code ross and bet five dollars on any nba team to win their game you can get $150 in free bets if they do. That's promo code ROSS, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. Um, all right. That'll do it, by the way, for an awesome, awesome week. Loving the drafts pick series with both Greg Cosell on the Ross Tucker Football Podcast and Emery Hunt on the college draft. They're doing very different divisions, and they have very different opinions 
which is what makes the world go round. Thought Joe was awesome on Wednesday, breaking down some of the recent signings, the A.J. Brown trade, the DeAndre Hopkins suspension, the Hollywood Brown trade from a fantasy perspective. Of course, the business of sports with Andrew Brandt talking to Ross Dellinger, who's been all over the NIL stuff, was really interesting as well. Um, shout out to our in order to Pizza Boy Brewing, Sporticulture, HumanHeadNYC.com, SteakhouseSports.com, Go-Bangles.com, Evergreen Economics, and Bry to our winners, Mike Singletary. Hang on. I want winners. I want people that want to win. Bry, you better not get rid of that. Hang on, because that was amazing. It's the subtle. I don't know why you said hang on because like you didn't have it punched up. You weren't ready for that. But like that hang on was incredible. Like, it's the little things that people like, Brian. Uh, spread the word winner, Ryan Dolan. No relation that I'm aware of to Joe. You know why? He followed me on TikTok at Ross Tucker NFL. Please do that at Ross Tucker NFL. Trying to grow the TikTok account. Going to be fun. Sponsor confirmation email winner. Muhammad Alabadi, Athletic Greens. Love it, Muhammad. All you have to do is take advantage of any of our awesome sponsors. Send it to me, Ross at RossTucker.com, like Muhammad did. And bam, you're good to go. All of you guys, Ryan Dolan, Muhammad Alabadi, let me know. I got some awesome press passes still, including the sideline pass from the Penn State game, blue-white game. Then, you, or you can get a picture Sign card, whatever you want. It's really up to you. YouTube shout out winner. Love. Please subscribe to our YouTube. YouTube and TikTok are where I'm really trying to grow. So if you're on YouTube at all, just give us the thumbs up. YouTube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. You can see the highlight clips of the other shows or watch the whole episode as well as TikTok at Ross Tucker NFL. Uh, Daniel, email me and let me know. Daniel Remus. Let me know who you want the YouTube, uh, the cameo style shout out for. I'll make that video today. I'll make that video as soon as you email me, Daniel. Love making you guys shout out videos. Love speaking engagements, by the way. Shout out to the folks at DNH Distribu uh, Distributing for having me last night. Really, really enjoyed that. I'm so glad that we're kind of back to the point where we can actually do speaking engagements in person. That was a lot of fun. I think we're done here. Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feast, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found.